Well, if you are not looking at the TV screen right now, stop and check out what happens when the worlds of sports and science collide. <laughs> So that's what it is like inside a football helmet when another supersized human being is colliding with your skull. This season, the NFL is facing more questions about concussion protocols, and we are tracking some research that's going on right here in Detroit. Paula Tutman takes us inside one lab to see what doctors are learning. This was a helmet to helmet hit. This was actually only going 12 miles an hour. That's not even the most serious of the hits you see on game day. Those hits can go as high as 20 miles an hour. But when you see it like this, instead of in the stands or on television, you can really understand why it's so important to get these concussion protocols right. The hits keep coming. Elbow hit first in the head. Does it seem like there are more concussive caliber hits in football, or are we just seeing more of them because we're more aware? Bill Roos, who's in the middle of the field for high school games, says the answer is both and more. You see head hits often, um, collisions, uh, forceful impacts. Uh, I see them almost every game. And it's, it's frightening to see. At Wayne State University, the research is clear. Current protocols are not enough because they deal with single events like this. Uh -oh, uh oh But over the course of a career, a football player can get a head hit over and over and over again. And so what we're trying to look at is not just the big concussive impacts, but the cumulative subconcussive impacts to determine kind of what effect those are having on our players. Dr. Cindy Burr leads a team of scientists looking into the future of trauma and how it plays out on the football field. I'm part of the NFL Head Health te uh, Tech Challenge Committee and part of the NFL Engineering Committee. Like a speeding bullet, high-speed impact tests are being performed on helmets, not only to gauge the efficacy of the helmet, but also the measurements of the trauma to the dummy in the helmet. This is one of the head forms that we can test these mouth guards with. Mouth guards are being used to measure the full impact of those hits. So what these mouth guards have inside them are angular and linear accelerometers, and they'll last for the whole duration of the game and we can collect all that information on board and then when they get synced, we get all that data back to us and we can really look at what a player was exposed to on the field. Baseline data is being collected and then college players and in some programs, NFL players are real-time guinea pigs collecting data as they play and get hit. We're basically trying to figure out things like when should a player be pulled off the field, when should a player be monitored, when should a player be, you know, observed for further changes that might give us some clues that they've sustained some injuries. So the research being done today at Wayne State University is actually a game changer because what it's going to do is it's, it's going to change the way these protocols will be called. And, and they'll start taking a look at what informs the trigger or the tipping point for cumulative hits. And so you can see why this research is so critical for the future of the game. Paula Tutman, Local 4.